United Against Cancer. So good afternoon, uh, good morning, hello everyone. It's nice to be here again on another Onko Daily interview, United Against Cancer. My name is Zainab Shinkafi Bagudu. I'm a pediatrician. I run a nonprofit in Nigeria called the Medicaid Cancer Foundation, and I'm a board member of the Union for International Cancer Control. Today, we're going to be having a chat with one of the loveliest people I've ever met. Her name is Pat, and she's going to tell us a little bit about herself in a minute. Uh, Pat Garcia is the CEO of the Max Foundation. Uh, Max Foundation is one of the foundations that um, have been working very hard in terms of accelerating health equity and equity in terms of justice and fairness to all. We're not talking about equality when we talk about cancer control, but we're talking about equity so that there is a just and fair access to treatments, to the valuable treatment that is coming up in cancer. Max Foundation is dedicated to the memory of young Max. And after that, a lot of innovative uh, progress came in the area of leukemia, in particular, chronic myeloid leukemia, which I'm sure Pat is going to mention in her interview today. Thank you very much for joining us for this interview, Pat. I'd like you to start by giving us a brief introduction about yourself and the work that you do at the Max Foundation. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure uh, to be here. And uh, thank you for talking about Max uh, because he is the inspiration of for the organization. As you know, Max was my stepson and he passed away many years ago from chronic myeloid leukemia. He was only 17 years old. So I understand I understand what families go through all over the world. And we established the Max Foundation to alleviate the suffering of other families. So they didn't have to go through what we went through. You know that when we established the Max Foundation from day one until today for all these years, every day, I receive emails from people from all over the world that have a very similar situation, they or their loved one has been diagnosed with cancer. They are told that there is a medicine, but the medicine mm. is not in their country. Yes. And they are trying to ask us, please, can we uh, help uh, them access this medicine? So for the past 25 years, we have dedicated to figuring out how we can help these patients. And we are fortunate that we have been able to accomplish a lot. Uh, we have helped more than 100,000 families access innovative tra cancer treatment for the past 26 years. Many of these families we, we helped for many years because some of these treatments today for cancer you have to take for many, many years, uh, sometimes for decades. So, you know, we stay with the patient and their family for as long as they need the treatment. Um, and, you know, we, as, as happy and proud that I am of what we have accomplished, as you know so well, there is so much more. There is so much more need. So... You know, we, we need to continue to work together to increase access to, to treatment for cancer in low and middle income countries. Yeah, thank you. That's, that's very true. And we do know about the excellent work and the impact in particular that the Max Foundation has made in low middle income countries uh, by providing access to uh, chronic myeloid leukemia medication, in, uh, especially imatinib. Um, I with so with about 20 years of experience that has been dedicated to improving the lives of cancer survivors, 
what have we what have been your most significant challenges and should i say also in the same breath maybe you can tell us the achievements we've seen the impact that you've made the number of lives that have been touched the doses that you deliver on a daily basis at the foundation but what kind of challenges do you face it's an it's a global access program we work uh, with various access programs in nigeria in the foundation the uicc recently launched atsam as a program uh, but you are doing it on a more global level so tell us a little bit about the the challenges that you have faced in the, do it, delivering this amazing work that you've done yeah thank you so much the you know i think honestly the biggest challenge we have had to overcome is to overcome perceptions you know mm -hmm. we have to break through a lot of assumptions Mm -hmm. For example, first, as you know so well, first, many years ago, people said cancer is not a problem in Africa. Cancer is not a problem in low and middle income countries, so we are not going to prioritize. And it has mm -hmm. taken us a long time to show not only that cancer is a problem, but that there's a cancer epidemic in these countries. So once we show that and finally we convince people okay cancer is a problem then they raise the bar and they said okay we understand it's a problem but it's not possible to treat cancer it's not possible because there is no infrastructure and so in the past 20 years we have uh had we have demonstrated i think one of the most important thing the max foundation has done is demonstrated that you, indeed you can treat cancer safely and, um, and we, you can uh, improve the lives. You know that in chronic myeloid leukemia in, and other, in a few other cancers, we have data that shows we have eliminated the survival disparity between the uh, Western world and the low income world. Yes. There is, you, because we have, actually provided access to the drugs, we have provided access to the diagnostics, and we have provided patient support. So we, we showed the world, it's not that it's not possible, it is indeed possible. So now you know they raised the bar higher, and now they said, okay, it's not sustainable. Okay, it's possible. Okay, there's a need. Okay, there is possible, but it's not sustainable. Sustainable. This is the latest. This is the latest right? It has to be sustainable. And then I ask myself, first of all, if we have done it for 20 years, how is that not sustainable? And yeah. second, sustainable for whom? For whom? Because we need to implement programs that are sustainable for patients, that are sustainable for physicians, that are sustainable for institutions. So this is the, the current fight that we have and I think you and I can um, <laughs> agree that we need to overcome this perception. The challenges, the logistical challenges are a lot, of course. Mm -hmm. Regular mm -hmm. the regulatory environment as you can as you know is so complicated. Uh, mm -hmm. So dealing with uh, international regulation of uh, shipment of medicines, storage of medicines, controlling the supply chains. We've had, we have very good systems for forecasting and planning. Um, and then we face the challenge of the diagnostics, which is such a big barrier because of course, because there has never been treatment there was no need to diagnose. I'm sure you know so much better than I do. Nobody wants to diagnose a patient so that mm. you have nothing to There's give. No yeah. yeah. So we have been working a lot uh, on that uh, to bring diagnostics and increase uh, infrastructure, strengthen infrastructure. Um, and I think that at the end of the day, we all need to understand that access to cancer treatment should be seen as a, as a long-term investment in these communities. Mm. You know, we need to, if, if COVID taught us anything, is that we are on this world together. We need each other. 
Absolutely. And it can we cannot leave half the world behind. It is not mm-hmm. good, even from an economic perspective, it is not right. good for business to leave the half a world behind. We just need to understand that. And if I can share, you know, I, I see this every day, how important it is for that one patient who is a person who has a family to be able to access treatment and survive their cancer. You know, I I have, for example, the example of a dear uh, friend in El Salvador named Jessica, who was diagnosed with leukemia when she was 16. Uh, some time ago, she sent me an email. She told me it's, she's a lawyer. She's a lawyer now. She's 25 mm-hmm. years old. She's a lawyer. Or, mm-hmm. or, or my friend Rose, who lives, Rose is a, it's a widow. She's a mother of six. She's a farmer. And she lives in a remote island of Papua New Guinea. Her life is important. She is the core of that family and that community. So we uh, think that is it has a lot of value for the world to save her life if we can. Or my dear friend in Ethiopia who was diagnosed with leukemia when he was a medical student. And now not only he is a hematologist, but he has now been a teacher and uh, he has brought in uh, nine new uh, resident hematologists to, to Ethiopia, which of course is so important. So we just have to think about this differently. Uh, and then we have to make sure that the world understands that. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Anka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.